Hello, everybody. As you're joining in, I'm going to give everybody just another minute to get connected. All right, looks like the number of participants has gotten a little more steady, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Um, wish I could see your smiling faces. Um, that would have been nice, but um, I'm really excited to have you um, sit in on this. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm Karen Roberson. I've been with Oasis Solutions 30 years now. Just hit that milestone a couple months ago. And I've been working with ERP softwares for over 40 years now. Um, and I've got to tell you, this topic today is really one of my favorites. A um, little bit of housekeeping, I guess, real quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you, let's see, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you should have a little toolbar. And one of the icons on there is a Q&A. If you have questions during the webinar, um, please go ahead and type them in as we go. I've got John Stinson on here. Um, he is going to monitor that for me, and he's going to let me know when there is a question. And let's see um, if anybody has any technical difficulties. Um, if you want to drop that into a chat and we can try to help you, um, I think by now most of us are probably Zoom experts. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, we're talking today about Business Insights Explorer. And like I said, this is really one of my favorite topics. It's, um, it's a tool that is fairly simple but it's got lots of potential. So um, we're going to delve into a lot of those features. And quite honestly, there's so many features with it that in the time we have allotted, I am not going to be able to cover everything. But I will give you enough information that you'll be able to get started with it. And then we'll also take a look at the end at the help screen so that you can go in later and you know, once you get comfortable with the basics, um, start looking at how you can expand on that knowledge. If you're a nerd like me, you're going to really love this. All right. Um, let's see. So we've got the Explorer views. You will see I've got my Sage 100 open, and I've got it set to the module for Business Insights. And then you'll see we've got um, the submenus of Dashboard, Reporter, and Explorer. So this is a list of all the views that are possible with Sage 100. Now, it, this is based on what modules you have. So like you'll see some sales order views, um, some purchase order. If you don't have those modules, you won't see those views listed. So this is a really long list. And sometimes it can be, you know, if you're not used to it, you're looking at it and you're like, ah, I'm not sure what that's referring to. Like I see account view, and the first thing my mind does is it goes to, oh, those are my customer accounts. Because I've been doing this so long, I know that, no, nope, that really means it's a general ledger view. So what I do typically is whatever module I'm going to be working in, or um, you know the data I'm looking for, I go to that module. So like if I look in General Ledger, it has an Explore view, and that's where I've got an account view. So um, that would be a way to you know like if you 
wanted to use your chart of accounts report and you wanted some different information to list, this would be a different way to do it. Um, I've got account transactions. So this would use the same information that's in your general ledger detail report. I have the account budgets view. So your budget reports, um, I should say your budget, the, the reports you can do to report on your budget. Boy, that was really awkward. Anyway, that one is um, right here. And a lot of your modules, not every single one has it, but your main ones, accounts receivable, payables, inventory, sales order, purchase order, job cost, they all have their own views. So um, almost everybody has customers that they use with Sage, so that gets picked on a lot. Um, so I'm going to go to accounts receivable, and in my Explore menu, I can see that I have views on the customers, salesperson, customer history invoices, customer open invoices, customer repetitive invoices, and customer payments. So, um, you know, it's up to you which one, you know, which way you prefer to get into it. It's the same difference, just a little easier to um, be with a little subset here. So I already have one open down here. This is um, the customer history invoices. And it tells me right here. And I will tell you right now, this is a customized view I've already created. Um, I wanted to use this as a starting point. And then we'll go back and we'll start with the default and I'll show you how you can get a view that looks like this one. So one of the first things is, see up here with this setting, it says grouped by customer. If I click on that drop down, I can see here um, a section for public, section for private. So those, um, as I create a view, I save it. I have the option of making it a private view. So it's only available to me. But if I want any user that has access to the module, you know, to the Explorer modules, um, be able to get to it, then I make it a public view. So I have two different ones here. Um, and when you create a view, you also have the option of setting which one is your default. So that means when you open that particular view, the one that you've designated as the default is the one that will automatically display. So I'm going to show you some uh, over here on the navigation pane. You'll notice down here at the bottom, I have preview, explore, and task. Let's start down here with tasks, and you see I have enter AR invoices, AR repetitive invoices, all these different tasks. Um, what that means is those are tasks on your Stage 100 menu. Like if I have this particular invoice number, 10033, highlighted, if I right-click on it, I meant to right-click here. If I right click here and I go to tasks, notice how I have the same options here that I have over here on the left. So point being, a lot of us have gotten used to doing right clicks and, and things happen. So you can either do that or you can come to your tasks down here. And like if I wanted to say, all right, I want to do a sales order. Now on this particular one, this invoice, 1033, it is associated with sales order number 153. 153 is a back order, so it is still an open order. So therefore, when I said go to sales order entry, it actually opens up that sales order. Now, if I go to um, another invoice, like 1034, I think that's one that does not have an open sales order. So all that does is it opens up my sales order entry and it lets me start putting in a sales order right now. So um, it doesn't default the customer or anything. It just 
all it's done is gone and selected the next order number. So you can just go right there. Now, so you've got all these tasks that are here that are available. And go back down here to our um, navigation pane. So when I look at Explore, this shows me the different um, other views. So if I wanted to go look at the open invoices, I could go to the standard view for that. Um, I have a public one that's called Days Overdue. I could go to that. Um, it's just a way to quickly um, move around and other things you've already got set up. I'll we'll go back to preview here. Now what I'm going to point out is we have history invoice items. What that means is I'm in the customer history invoices. And you'll notice my information here. I have um, information that's related to the sales order. So, you know, I think all of us are probably used to when you do um, your data entry, you know, you have a screen that's called your header, and you have a screen that's called totals, and, you know, that has your customer information and the, you know, your, your subtotals, taxes, right, you know, whatever you might have. So that is the information that's available up here. If I want to see the detail, then this bottom section here, history invoice items, because this is um, an invoice that came from a sales order, it has information about inventory items. So if I go to different invoices, you'll notice I've got different information. So this one, this is a credit memo, and that's the item that was credited. Um, invoice 1041, 42. So the items keep changing. And that's going to be important a little, a little bit later. I'm just going to give a little tickler here. Now, what we can do with this preview over here, if I click on Open Invoices, this shows me the invoice re information related to that particular um, invoice. So like 1042, you know, it's got a lot of the same information that we already have at the top. But you'll notice here we have a column for the balance. So, um, you know, that's just um, one of the views you can utilize while you're in here. And then if I go to customer payments, this one would show me that, oh, this, you know, I had this much cash applied and um, it was a cash deposit and there's my check number. So, um, Lots of handy information. And if you are doing package tracking, you know, where you're putting in those um, package numbers, you can get that information to show too. All right, so let's go back up to the history invoice. Um, and I want to show you, um, making sure I don't miss anything here. I'm really good at doing things um, off the hip, but if I follow a script, sometimes I miss things or if I'm supposed to follow a script. So a um, couple of other features. Notice here, so I'm on a data grid. I have an option here for chart. So I had this saved with this chart. It, it doesn't um, default to a specific chart. I created this definition. So this shows me sales information, um, and my group by is customer. So down here across the bottom, I have each of my customers. So Shepard is a big, important customer. I can see that very quickly and easily. Right. We will go back and talk more about that later. Um, oh, the other thing people like to do, if I go up here to File, I have an Export option. So I can do um, an office merge with Access Excel or Word. I can export it to Microsoft Access Database. I can export it to Excel or Word, Query Definition, XML, Web Page, X. 
So I can do it as either a comma delimited or a tab delimited file. So, um, you know, a lot of people are really comfortable with Excel, so they like to get lists and export them to Excel and then slice and dice. Um, so a lot of what you would do in Excel, you can do in these Explore views. Um, but, you know, if you're like me, you know, also, I'm guilty of it. It's like if I spent a little bit of time, I could learn to do some things faster in its native environment. But um, if I might be able to do it faster in Excel. I'll do it in Excel. But, you know, that's, that's up to you. Um, all right. So I'm going to point out a few more things here. So some of the things that you can do in the Explorer views that I've already set up on this customized view. So see um, up here in this section, I've got customer name. This means I've already done some groupings. And within those groupings, I have set some um, summaries. So this summary here on the customer name, that is a count. That's telling me I have 18 invoices for this customer. And if I scroll down, see, I've got one, 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 you know, there's three. So this over here on this section is summarizing each of those columns. So I tell it what columns I want to summarize. And then I have some, um, some options and we will see more on that also later. So got groupings, I've got summaries. I can also do some sorts within them. So like here, I've got 18 invoices on American Business Futures. If I click in the type column, it has sorted them. So all my credit memos are listed first, then my um, invoices, and then I have some deleted invoices that got listed too. And I'll click it again, and it does it in reverse order. And usually, by default, they're going to be sorted in the order of whatever that first column is. Uh, let's see. And there are filters. So you'll notice down here, this says filter is empty. Over here on the right, I have this filter builder button. So we're not going to build one yet, because um, we're, we're going to do that in just a moment. But I wanted to show you um, that all of this is here, and it's very easy to access. All right. Um, haven't heard anything yet, so I'm assuming we don't have any questions yet. All right, so then I am going to go start with my standard. Okay. So I have switched to the def to the de um, kind of misnomer there, but the, your standard view. So the first time you open a view, this sorry this particular view, this is what you're going to see. Um, so the way I created that customized view. Um, notice, look at all this information across. And I've got a scroll bar that takes me even further. So I've got so much information here, which can be handy, but it can also be like, I don't need all that information. So I can, um, like if I don't care what application it's from, I click, I drag it up. If I see that X, I know it's going to delete it. Um, I don't use divisions maybe, so I can get rid of that. Um, Got my customer name. I don't care about my customer number. This particular task, I don't need the terms. So I can keep clicking and dragging. Or if there's a lot of things I'm getting rid of, if I right click and I go to column selection, 
Over here on the right, create a little box for me. Um, and nope, I just confused myself. Jumped ahead. I'm going to focus on my task. So these are ones I could add back in. I'm sorry. Um, what I meant to show you was I can go to, I do my right click and go to column settings. These are um, the most commonly used columns, I guess you could call them. And the ones that have check marks are the ones that are displaying. So rather than click and drag them off one at a time, I could come in here and I can select things on and off. I don't need that. Customer PL is not important for this. Um, and you can see as I'm clicking things off, my list is getting more narrow here and not looking at commissions or discounts in relation to this or deposits. So very quickly, I can take things away. All right, so that um, in and of itself is very powerful. Next really powerful thing is I can, um, I'm going to right click again and go back to my column selection. I'm sorry, column settings. And so these are some columns I can add. But like if I'm looking and, and, you know, maybe I've got some different regions and I use my city as, or the zip code or something like that for my regions, that's not listed. But if I click on this Add button here, this lists tables that are already associated with these views. So you can't add to this list. Um, whatever shows up is all that's available. So that is one of the limitations of these views. Um, but it has a lot of information. So if I open up the AR customer list, these are all the fields associated with the customer master file. So, um, you know, I've got a lot of things I can choose from. Date of last activity, date of last payment, date of last statement. Um, I'm going to click OK, and that adds the city. You can see it's already done over here, and I'm going to um, I'm adding that. So then if I go back to that add, um, terms code, you know, every invoice is associated with a terms code. So um, this is where you could get the terms code description. So, you know, you've just got a two-digit number you can use, which isn't always very descriptive. So it's nice to have that terms code description. Um, you have other information if you need. <clears throat> and, you know, if you've put um, inf detailed information about your salespeople, you, know, you can pull information onto this view. And the the first one that I skipped on purpose, the AR invoice history header, you know, this is the one I told you, you know, when you're doing your data entry, you've always got your header tab. You have your lines tab and you have your totals tab. And this is the table that we're based off of. Um, so anything that you would see on your headers tab or if you're on a sales order, your um, address information and your totals tab, all of that information is available here to be chosen. So um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's rare that I have to add something to this because the default views usually have um, everything. So it's only if somebody's doing something out of the ordinary, color, but um, you know, like maybe the confirm to or something. You know, I I could come in here and I can add that information. 
All right. So while we're in these column settings, um, let, actually, let me okay that. I want to point this out first. So your invoice total is comprised of your taxable sales, your non-taxable sales, your freight, and your sales tax. Um, and if you do, do discounts, you know, then it would uh, reduce it with the discount amount. So um, something that people frequently want is they don't want to see the taxable amount and the non-taxable amount. What they like to see is, you know, what was that total sales amount? And we can do a formula. So if I right-click, go back to my um, column settings, I have a button here called Calculated. I can call that whatever I want, sales amount. And then this is my expression builder. So this isn't the most intuitive thing, um, but there's not a whole lot to choose from here. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm just going down in, in my tables. I know that what I'm looking for was in that invoice history header. And I know that my numbers always come to the bottom. And I'm past it. Nope, I'm sorry. I forgot these are in alphabetical order. So I just happened to remember that was the non-taxable. Um, so I have non-taxable and taxable. So I'll say my non-taxable sales amount. I just double click. It adds that up there. I tell it I want to add it to my taxable sales. There's my taxable sales amount. So I double click on that, and now I have my formula. OK. And let's just OK that. We'll see what it does. So it has added it, my last column. I can click, move it over here, uh, so I can see, all right, I did my formula right. It's always a good idea when you're doing something you've not done before. Double check, make sure your formulas are right, that you got the right field. So once I validate that, I don't need taxable, I don't need non-taxable. So I just click and drag them up, and they're gone. Now, um, if I want to um, maneuver that a little bit more, if I right-click and go back to my column settings, so the width, if I ever knew what those 103 points count for, I don't remember. You just um, have to play with a little bit. But what you will want sometimes is your format. So notice how these have the dollar sign um, 1, comma, 113.05, and this is just 107.585. If I want it to format it like a dollar amount, I have to choose currency. And I say OK. All right. Um, if I wanted to change um, salesperson, if I call them reps, if I right click and go to my column settings, I can change that to rep. And notice that for um, string fields, you do have a few options like make it all um, uppercase, lowercase. my title there. 
I hope everybody is excited as as I was when I learned about these things. Make sure I don't take things too much out of order here. Um, okay, so then got all the columns set up. That's all great. Now we can start doing some groupings and start doing some um, subtotals. So if I want to group it by the customer name, if I click, drag it, so look how it gives you these little hints. See those little two green arrows? Drag a column here to group by that column. So I can move that customer name up there. Um, you you can do multiple groupings. Um, this particular example doesn't lend itself to that, but I'm going to show you that I could take rep and I could do a subsort. I don't need that. I'm drag it up and it takes that grouping away. All right. So now I've got all of my um, invoices grouped by the customer. So they're in customer number order now. And so I've got um, this set up and, and kind of ready for me here. I do a right click down here. I can t do a group summary footer. I'll let that it's always visible or visible when group expanded. Just a few little nice things you can play with there. Then I have my summary buttons up here. Summary footer, group summary footer. So that um, was what we just saw. And I'm going to go to, um, I just blanked. Excuse me for a moment. There we go. Under tools. Summary footer. Notice down here, it just added these boxes. And now when I go down here, see it's giving me hints. So add a summary column, right click the summary panel below the column to be summarized. So if I right click this, I'm on invoice total. I can either do a sum, I can do a minimum, a maximum, a count, or an average. So I choose sum, and it it gives me the totals. So I just go through and I do this each one. Ooh. Stuff. Okay. So then I want to talk about filters. So. Um, Notice here, this little bar here gives us the details of what has been filtered already. So what this means, type is not equal to XD, that is something internal within Sage um, that deleted invoices, their type is XD. Um, so our deleted invoices are not showing. So the other thing, I've got a sample company here. My data set is very small. You would not want to come in and get a list of every single invoice you have in history. Um, so anytime you're looking at things like that, one of the very first things you're going to do, go to this filter builder button, and you're going to want to add a filter for dates. So um, there's the one that's already set up that the type does not equal XD, so that 
deleted invoices don't show. So then click this button to add a new condition. Then I click in here and I can say, all right, my invoice date, um, usually you're not just doing one invoice date. So if I click in my conditional box, I can choose um, less than or equal to greater than, um, or it has a really nice one for dates between. You'll notice this list is really long. So um, there's already some things built in for last seven days or newer, uh, last 120 days or newer. So you, know, you have to really look, make sure something's not already there to make your life easier. So then um, I can either use the, the little calendar or my sample data is a little bit different. So it's all based on 2025 and uh, May is a popular month for our sample data. So I can add as many filters as I want. I can apply or I could just click OK and it would be there. So now my list has shrunk. So um, there are my ABF invoices, uh, American Business Futures. And then this is something you need to train yourself to look at is down here um, on this filter row, you've got um, a list of what filters you've got in place. So, you know, there, there's nothing that you can set that tells it to prompt, you know, like most of the reports you run. Before you run the report, you can tell it what dates you want. Um, so the Explorer views don't do that, but you can, um, you know, just make it, start making it a habit, look at what's there, and use that filter builder button on the right, um, and then just come in and edit your dates as you need. Okay, so. Um, there are two more big things I like to show people, and one of them is, um, you know, if you're looking at invoice history, you know, a lot of times you want to see information in regards to what what you have sold, you know, not just who and how much, but what. So this um, is another one thing that is not um, real intuitive. So if anybody is really paying attention to me right now, if you've got a pen and paper nearby, this is something you want to make a note of. If I wanted to change my list so that it's going by the items on the orders, or I'm sorry, the invoices instead of just the invoice information, the, the basic information, if I go up to my drop-down menu and I go to View and I go to Open Preview, sorry, over on the other screen is asking me if I want to save my settings, so I just said no. Um, now, this is a list of every item on every invoice. Now, notice it doesn't include the customer information or which invoice it is. So you typically are going to edit this. So I'm just going to throw a few things on here real quick so you'll see. Um, go to my column settings. I go to add. So before, you know, we had AR invoice history header and we had um, AR customer, we had AR terms code, and we had um, another one I just forgot. Anyway, so now we see different things because these are files that are associated with the invoice history detail. But that invoice history header is associated with that detail. So if I want to add the invoice number, I have to choose these one at a time, unfortunately. So I'll go back to the invoice history header and I want my customer number. And so on and so forth, you know, whatever information I need associated with it. So now I have this. And if I wanted to sort it by the customer number, I just 
click and drag that up here into my area. All right, so I'm going to repeat how I got to this point. Um, I'm going to go back. I hadn't shown you this back. Um, oh, no, I don't want to save my settings. So this is back where we started. If I want to take the information that's in this bottom section based on my preview settings here. So right now, we're looking at the items that were on an invoice. If I want to list by that, I go up to um, View, Open Preview, and there they are. All right, so in the few minutes I have left, I want to show you the help screen. So um, for those of you who didn't already know, Sage's help system is pretty darn good. Um, in most of the Sage screens, you've got a question mark that's in the bottom right corner. On this one, there's a help button up here at the top. If you go to the Sage 100 Business Insights Explorer help, this looks similar to the other help screens that you'll see. So um, you've got the navigation, which just tells you how to get to the screen that Jerry had open. Um, the overview right here, this just tells you what the screen does. And then um, this has more information about the field. So like if you wanted to know more detail about the navigation pane, you can go to that. Um, so, so this explains what I was showing you at the beginning. I'm going to go back. Um, so what I really like, and this is where, um, you know, I told you we were only going to touch the tip of the iceberg of what you could do with these Explorer views. This is where, um, if you've got a little bit of time, once you get comfortable with some of the basics, come in here and um, look at the help screen. Uh, if your system has user-defined fields, this tells you about adding those. Um, it tells you um, some things that I didn't even go into, drilling into some preview data, displaying more of the summary data, more about exporting the data, filter data. Um, and then you've got related topics down here. Um, this FAQ, Business Insights Explorer, uh, frequently asked questions. What's the difference between a view setting and filter? Um, what information is saved with the view setting? So lots of questions can be answered here. I'll go back. Um, it, this tells you more about those column settings. If you wanted to do a calculated field, um, just so much information. Um, you know. And it unfortunately it is one of those things where you know sometimes you just got to spend a little bit of time. Um, but if if you're like me, first thing you've got to do is you just got to get your hands on it. You just got to get in, and you just got to spend a little bit of time playing with it and getting comfortable. Um, you can delete views, and you know if you know if you create a view um, or you modify it, it asks you if you want to save it. So it takes care of all of that by itself. And that reminds me, one of the things I forgot to show you was, um, so you can go to save setting as. So like if I have one that I've already built and I want to make some additional changes so that it's kind of like two different reports, I can go to save setting as and give it a new name. And then this is where I can tell um, if it's my default setting or if I want it to make a default setting for all users. And, boy, I could talk for a long time about this topic, but we're out of time. Um, we've promised from 2 to 2.45. If anybody has any questions, um, I don't see anything. I hope everybody found this useful. Um, you know, if you've got any questions, you can always reach out to me. Um, email tech support at oasisky.com. Um, all of our um, consultants are familiar with this. Um, I don't know if they all love it as much as I do, but we all we all enjoy it.
and I'll stay on for a few more minutes in case anybody does have a question. Um, otherwise, I thank you greatly. Um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I've got a question. Okay, I have a new user. How long does it take for all the data to be available for him? Um, I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. Um, Can you clarify a little bit on that, Patricia? I'm not sure if you're talking about specifically in relation to Explorer views or if it's a bigger question. You run the report for him, and he is un I mean, unable to see all the data from our company. Um, that could be related to um, so there what's it called um, there are some security settings yes um, I I think um, I think it is a setting issue so in in role maintenance um, you specify if somebody has access to specific tasks and then there are depending on how your system was set up you might also be able to specifically exclude um, even to the field level so like for example if um, if you well I, I don't have it set up on my system um, Patricia, can can I um, give you a call later this afternoon about that specifically? All right, I will call. Just drop my mouse. Thank you for that phone number. I was hoping we had it set up directly to you. Okay, I've got it. I'll give you a call a little bit later this afternoon. You're welcome. All right. Well, I am going to go ahead and we will end this.